Hi everybody! Welcome to the Jada and Stitches Show. Today we're going to show you how to make a cute, comfortable, and very quick seat cushion. This is the type of cushion that ties onto a chair, and I like the way these look in the kitchen, maybe even the baby nursery, the front porch, the back deck, anywhere where you might be using chairs that have spindles that you can tie a cushion onto. And these ties keep your cushion in place, they don't let you slip off <laughs> while you're sitting on it. This is also a great project to use up that super bulky size 6 yarn with. In particular, I use that chenille blanket yarn for this cushion. I've been using this cushion in the craft room here on my little wooden chair for the last couple of weeks, and it's made the entire experience much more comfortable. <laughs> this is a granny square project. It's actually two granny squares. And while we've covered granny squares here on the show several times, we're still going to take you through the first few rows of this pattern because even a familiar pattern can look pretty different when you change up the size and thickness of your yarn and the size of your hook. I made this one using an uninterrupted ball yarn. It's a self-striping colored yarn, but I liked it so much that I made another one using even smaller scraps of blanket yarn that I had. I changed colors every two rows. Now it's the exact same pattern, but if changing colors still leaves you with some question marks, then make sure you stay tuned to the end of the tutorial because we'll have some really simple quick tips on how to easily change colors without sweating it. <laughs> so let's grab our hooks, we'll grab our super bulky yarn, we'll head on over to the craft table, and we will stitch up a seat cushion together. In order to make our granny square chair cushions, I'm using a super bulky size 6 yarn. This is a chenille blanket style yarn. I'm going to use approximately 200 yards, around 250 grams. It depends on the size of the seat cushion you're making, but I'm making two squares and I'm putting them together, so you want to air on too much rather than not enough. But this is a great project to use up all of those bulky weight scraps on. You can just keep tying in a new scrap as you work your granny square and get a real cute cottage chic look going. You're also going to want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle with an eye big enough to accommodate that super bulky yarn, and I'm using an 8 millimeter hook. This is also known as an L or an 11 in the US, a size 0 in the UK. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. If you really enjoy our show and you have a lot of fun with us here, then consider supporting us. You can subscribe, click the like button, share our videos with your friends, or you can purchase a pattern at our Etsy shop, or join and become a channel member. You'll find more information in the description box down below, links to our Etsy shop, and also how to join, and there's more information if you click that join button below this browser. We're going to make two identically sized granny squares. So this is a six row granny, or a six round granny. There's the center, you can count row one, two, three, four, five, six, or you can count the shells along the side, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's six rounds all together, and because we're using that super bulky yarn and a nice big hook, it works up really quickly. This is 12 inches, or 30 centimeters squared. We want two of them, and then we're going to stitch them together, so they're going to end up with a little extra width on all four sides after we put them together. Uh, this should fit an average kitchen chair, and uh, if you needed to make it bigger, of course you could add as many rows as you needed to. This is a standard granny square pattern, but it does look a little different when you're working with bulky weight yarn. We're all going to begin with a slip stitch. And if you don't use a bigger hook and thicker yarn very often, you might find that you need to sort of refiddle how you hold things. Um, you might work a little quicker, a little slower, it's fine, <laughs> no matter how you go at this. Uh, you might find you need to grab it in a slightly different space than you normally do. Um, whatever you find comfortable, it will get easier to work with as you go. We want to chain six chains to begin. So we're going to start with a chained ring. We're going to chain six, join with a slip stitch to that first chain and that's going to make us a nice big ring to work into. And we want a slightly larger ring than normal because our stitches are going to be very fat thanks to this nice thick bulky yarn. We're going to chain three to begin. The chain three at the beginning of every row counts as a double crochet, and to complete the first shell we're going to work two double crochets right into that ring, and it does feel different working 
with this bulky chenille style yarn. There we go. So three double crochet equals one shell. Chain two. This chain two is going to become a corner space. Into the ring, we're going to work three more double crochet. And those three double crochet will be our second shell in row one. There we go. Second shell, three double crochet. Chain two. This is going to become corner number two. Still working into that nice big center space, we're going to work three more double crochet into it. All right, there's three double crochet. Chain two, that's gonna become corner number three. And we wanna work our last shell of row one into that same big center space. Three more double crochet. And you don't have to work over your short tail. I like to, because I feel like it just sort of weaves it in as I go, but you can always wait until the end to weave it in afterwards. There's three more double crochet. That's the last shell. Don't forget to chain two more. That becomes corner number four. And then we're gonna find the top of the chain three that we began with. Stick our hook through the top of it. Try to get two loops there. And slip stitch to join. At the end of every row, I recommend you put it down, pull out those four corners so that you can really see them. If you have trouble seeing them because it's a big, bulky, fluffy yarn, you can use clips or stitch markers to mark your four corners and then just move them each row so you can keep track of where your corners are. And that is round one. At the end of every row, we're going to slip stitch across to the corner because it's nice to start every row in a corner. So all we have to do is slip stitch into the top of the next stitch, which always looks a little funny. So that's one. Slip stitch, try not to slip stitch too tightly. Slip stitch into the top of the next stitch. And then slip stitch into the corner space. So you join a row and you slip stitch across the next two stitches and into the corner space and that's where you can start your next row. And of course you won't see those slip stitches. Every row begins with a chain three. Because we're starting in corners now, we want to finish the entire corner. And a granny square corner is shell, chain two, shell, or three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. Now remember that chain three counts as a double crochet. So you only need to make two more double crochets to complete that first shell in your corner. There it is. Chain two, that becomes the new corner. And before you leave that corner space, you work three more double crochet into it. There we go. And there is the first corner of round two made. Shell, chain two for a corner space, shell. From here on out, every row as you're working across your sides, you're going to have to hop over a shell before you get to the next space, no matter whether it's a corner space or just a space between shells. As you're hopping over a shell from the previous row, you're just going to chain one. And that gives you some breathing room to work a big fat shell into in successive rows. The next space we come to is a chain two corner space. So we're going to do the same thing. Shell, chain two, shell, or three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. There's three double crochet. That's the first shell in the corner. Chain two, that becomes the new corner space. And before we leave, three more double crochet. And there you go. The next space is a corner space, but in order to get there, we've got to hop over a shell. So we're going to chain one, and then we're going to work into the next space, which is a corner. Shell, chain two, shell. You're going to do that all the way around until we get back to the beginning. So we've chained one, we're going to work shell, chain two, shell into the third corner. 
chain one as you skip over top of this shell and then shell, chain two, shell into the last corner and I'll catch up with you just before we finish row two. We're finishing row two. There's the last shell, chain two, shell. We're back to the beginning. But before we finish off the row, we've got to hop over a shell, which means you've got to chain one more just before you finish off. And then you find the top of the chain three that began the row and slip stitch to join. That's the end of row two. And as you know, we want to start row three and every other row in a corner. So before we get ready to start row three, we're just going to slip stitch across the top of those two stitches between where we joined and our chain two corner space. Slip stitch right into that corner space and that sets you up to start your next row. Lay down, pull out those four corners. It's looking nice and soft and fluffy. For row three and every successive row, they pretty much look the same. All you wanna do is start every row with a chain three. Finish that first corner by working two more double crochet So there's your first shell, chain two, and before you leave that corner space, three more double crochet. There we go. Every corner gets shell, chain two, shell. When you get to the next thing as you're working across a side, it'll be a little shell, so make sure you chain one to hop over top of the shell. And then you want to work into the next space. Well, in this case, and for every other row here on out, you're going to run into a lot of chain one spaces before you get to a chain two corner. When you run into a chain one space, it's a chain one space, so it gets one shell. So three double crochet worked into that little shell space in between shells from the previous row. So if it's a chain one space, it gets one shell. If it's a chain two space, that means it's a corner and it gets two shells. Easy to remember. Before we get to that corner space, we have to hop over a shell, so we chain one. And then we're into the corner space. Because it's a chain two space, it gets two shells. So shell, chain two, shell. Shell, chain two, shell. That's every corner space. The next thing is a shell from the previous row, so you chain one to skip over top of it. The next space you come to is a chain one space in between shells from the previous row. If it's a chain one space, it gets one shell. So you work three double crochet into it. You need to hop over another shell, so you chain one. And the next space is a chain two corner space. A chain two space gets two shells. Shell, chain two, shell. You're gonna repeat this little pattern all the way around and I'll catch up with you before we close off row three. As we near the end of row three, I've worked the last single shell into a chain one space. I've got to hop over a shell, so I can't forget to chain one. And then that brings me back to the beginning. There's the chain three that began the whole row. I'm going to stick my hook through the top of it and slip stitch to join. And that is the end of row three. This is exactly the same pattern from here on out. So you slip stitch across to the corner, you chain three to begin every row, the chain three counts as a double crochet, work two more double crochets into that corner chain stitch, I should say that corner space, to complete your first shell, chain two and work another shell. So every chain two corner space, and there's four in every row, gets shell, chain two, shell. As you work across a side, you chain one to skip over a shell, Every single row will increase by one new space on each side and one new shell on each side. So in total, every row grows by four shells or four chain one spaces. So in row four, you'll have a single shell twice before you get to the next corner. In row five, you'll have a single shell three times before you get to the corner. And in row six, you'll have a single shell four times before you get to the corner. So there's row six on my other blanket square. There's my corner, there's four individual shells, and then the corner. So all you're doing is working a single shell into a chain one space, and a shell, chain two shell, into a corner space. 
So I'm going to let you work away at that. You want to work six rounds or six rows of a granny square in total. We've done three together. You can do three more now. Don't forget to slip stitch across to your chain two corner space at the end of every row so you can start fresh in a corner for the next row. When you finish your sixth row on your first square, remember that you're always chaining one before you join each row to close it, slip stitch to the top of the chain three, and then you can snip your yarn and fasten off. That's for square number one. So you can snip your yarn, fasten off, and then flip your square over and weave your yarn tail in underneath and through some of the stitches along the back of your granny square. Remember, don't pull things too tightly because you don't want to pull them out of alignment. And if you're working back and forth, make sure that you loop over a loop of a stitch before you double back. When you finish square number two and you slip stitch to join in the top of the chain three of row six, you're not going to fasten off. We're going to attach our squares now. You do want to slip stitch across to the chain two corner space, just like you would if you were going to start another row. But now we're gonna get our other square and you want, if you've got a right side, a side that you prefer, you want it to face out. So flip it upside down so that your the wrong sides of both of your squares are facing, or it's put another way, the right side is facing out on both sides. You're gonna line them up, and now we're going to single crochet a seam all the way around. So we're gonna just chain one here before we get started. And our first single crochets are going to be in the corner. So you can just hold the two corner spaces together and single crochet right through both of them. So make sure you get the, your hook through both corner spaces. It should be pretty easy to see. And single crochet twice through those two spaces together. Now you can flip your squares so that you're working across the first side and just focus on one set of shells at a time. You're gonna put your hook through a stitch each of the first shell and single crochet. You're going to grab the next two stitches in that shell and single crochet. And then the last two stitches of that shell and single crochet. So what you're doing is you're single crocheting a nice even seam. When you get to a chain one space, you just single crochet right through the space and then focus on the next set of shells. Find the tops of the first two stitches, single crochet, find the middle two stitches, single crochet, and find the tops of the last three, or the last two stitches and single crochet. Sometimes working with this fluffy, bulky yarn, it's not always easy to see where your hook has to go, but because it's big, you can just sort of stick your hook through where you think it's supposed to go, and it'll generally find the stitch it needs to work into. So I'm just gonna let you work away at that. Just focus on one set of shells at a time. You work a single crochet across each of the three stitches in each shell, single crochet through each set of chain one spaces, and I'll hook up with you at the next corner. 
Here's the first side, or the first side seam, all neatly single crocheted together. You can see, you can see right through the sets of single crochet, or the single chain one spaces. When you get up to the corner, you're going to do what you did in the last corner. You're just going to work two single crochet into those corner spaces. So line up your corner spaces, stick your hook right through them, and single crochet twice. Then you can flip your squares and start all over again. Line up the first two shells, single crochet for, through those first two stitches, and then the next two stitches, and then the third set of stitches, and that brings you up to a chain one space. You're just going to repeat that all the way around, and I'll catch back up with you at the beginning. Once you've single crocheted in every stitch and space, and two single crochets in each of the four corner spaces, you get all the way back around that first single crochet you made, just slip stitch to join to it. Now, a couple words on ties. You can just chain a couple of lengths off of the two corners here, and then that's what you can tie your little seat cushion onto your chair with. You know, most chairs have those little spool on them. Or you can sew a couple of ribbons on. It depends on the look you're going for. But for simplicity, simplicity's sake, and since I still have some bulky weight yarn here, I'm just going to chain a couple of ties. I'm going to just start by chaining, ooh, maybe 20. I think that's long enough to tie a little bow or not, and then I will just snip my yarn and fasten off. I don't need a tail. I'm not going to be weaving that in. I'm going to make sure that's nice and tight, and I will trim that up later. But then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make another slip knot with a fairly long tail, so I've got something to weave in, and it'll hide. I'm going to join it in exactly the same place that I fastened off my yarn, and I'm going to chain 20 here too. So there's two simple ties coming out of one corner. I've pulled very taut on the ends to make sure that that knot is nice and tight, and I'm just going to trim them both so that they're kind of small. I'll weave this tail in in a moment, but I'm going to go over here to the other corner. So that's one corner. I'm going to go to the adjacent corner, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make a slip knot, join my yarn, chain 20, fasten off, and I'm going to do that twice in the same corner stitch. And it doesn't matter which stitch you take, just make sure that you put both of those little ties coming out of the same stitch. And there you go, a nice, thick and cozy, double-sided granny square chair cushion with ties. You can tie it on so it won't slip off when you're sitting on it. And of course, it's polyester, um, so you can toss it in the washing machine if you have to. You can make a whole set of these or just one for the craftiest seat in the house. One very simple, very cozy seat cushion and you can make a whole set in no time flat, especially if you want to give a little bit of a fresh decorative look to any of the rooms in your house. Now, if changing colors is a bit of a question mark for you, you can use exactly the same pattern that we were doing here with the, non the uninterrupted ball of yarn, but when you want to change colors, it's very simple. Finish the row you're on, so join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three, just like you would when you close a row, but instead of slip stitching to the corner, don't bother with that, just Snip your yarn and fasten off, so it's like you've finished your square completely. Then grab your new color, make a slip knot, pick any chain two corner you want, and join your yarn with a slip stitch in the chain two corner space. Then chain three and continue with the pattern, almost like you never changed colors or interrupted your yarn. It's very simple, there's no tying in a ball, you don't have to carry a color or anything, just snip it, close it off, and start the next one in the corner. <laughs> I love the effect that gives, that's every two rows, but you can experiment. Maybe you want to do color changes every, every row, maybe every three rows. Maybe do most of it in one color and then do the last row in a different color. Granny squares are so much fun. Great way to use up your scraps and 
very comfortable seat cushion, I have to say. I particularly like this one under my tush. So, we hope you enjoyed making a seat cushion along with us today, and we will see you soon here on the Jaden Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, stay cozy, <laughs> and we'll see you soon. Bye, everybody. Hi, everyone. This is Mom on Stitches. Thank you for watching. Here are a few other videos you might enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe, and you can also click the like button and the bell. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.